What's up everybody, it's your favorite Tokyo Drift Sir Nerd. Today we are looking at the Flame Toys Drift. This is on loan to me from Robert D, who initially had no interest in this figure and I told him it looked pretty amazing. And like I always say, Robert D has more money than he has sense, so he bought it on a whim. And that's why he is one of my personal heroes because one day I hope to be able to spend 300 and some dollars on a whim. $300 for me is usually a sit down, a meeting, some overtime, and some more stuff. But that's not all Robert sent me. I've been recently cracking jokes about Robert's age. And saying that of course he finds a lot of these toys impressive as he grew up playing with jacks. And of course a stick and a ball and other classic toys, perhaps a little wagon. And as a result, he sent me this. All these <clears throat> were in there. And if that wasn't weird enough, he asked me if I've ever worn whitey tighties and I told him no, so he sent me this. So he got me a pack of these bad boys, um, which I'm not going to be wearing because it's just really not for me. I'm a boxer brief kind of guy. But I am going to place it in a donations bag. We have a fairly high homeless population here, so that's where it's going, and I hope some someone can use them. And that's why he's one of the most peculiar people I've ever met in my life, but a good dude overall. I'm really anxious to look at this guy. Let's get started. He comes with two swords and scabbards. They are identical, so let's just look at one. Painted to the nines, everything is painted. Everything. We have these extra bits that are glued on. We have silver, red, white, gold paint, two different shades of white. And then this piece can tab into the side hips. And then the sword itself is removable with more silver paint, red paint, this like grayish paint, like a gray, like a blue gray, and then a gray, and then a gunmetal. Phenomenal. And of course, he comes with his big old sword which has this black and gold and red and then all of this detail is here with the golds and the translucent over top of gold. It's, it's ridiculous as it is, but then you can remove it for a gunmetal gold and then, I mean, gunmetal silver and then more gold down here with tons of sculpted detail, more silver paint here. And then if you don't like this look, you can push this in, which extends these two pieces and makes it look even more ridiculous. Truly awesome. And then he comes with two alternate faces. One, I gotta hurry up and get the video back to Blockbuster before it's a day late and I gotta pay the fees face. And one, ah, I didn't make it in time face. Comes with a slew of hands, left and right holding hands, left and right fist hands, left and right relaxed hands, left and right saluting hands, two sets of left and right posing hands, one set of left and right thumbs up hands. In addition to the two extra holding hands that you get in a different stylization that was seen in the opening footage. You get two soft goods, one is a scarf, one is like a poncho. They are done identically. They're double seam uh, soft goods. The inside is worn, like has a weathering effect to it. And there is some slight shading and sort of effects on the outside. So it all in all, good to go. And then you get a display base, sculpted, no paint. It could have used some. And then this plugs into here and then you can adjust the angle here. You can also move this to here and adjust the angle further. And then this moves up and this pegs into that slot. And then lastly, you get this piece which pegs into his back and holds the big sword scabbard. There is a gimmick light up feature. One of them is here. You grab this piece and pull up. As you do so, this piece pushes out and then that lights up there. It also works the same when you push it in. This piece will fold in. For the lights on the front, there's a little compartment here. Gently lift it up and then slide the switch over and that'll light up his chest and eyes. And then there's this piece that lights up and that's done by taking this off, sliding the switch over and placing it back on. And all lit up, he is pretty amazing. Now let's talk about this figure. I'll be honest with you, I can't wait. This is the most excited I have been to talk about a figure in a very long time. All right, so the head, I, I, like, wait for it. Wait till we get to these knees. The head is on a ball peg from the neck. The neck is on a ball peg into the chest. So together, it sort of works like a double ball peg, giving you a great range forward, a little bit back because of the helmet, side to side, tilt, whatever you want to do. Detailings wise, like I said, painted head to toe. We got whites and grays and golds and silvers and like the gray for the face is perfect. The sculpt on the face is perfect. My only criticism that I wouldn't even have 
had I not looked at the fans toys Omega is that there is a way to give the the eyes life and then have the light up feature also work. The Omega is where I first saw it, and I feel like anybody that does light up eyes should follow that, so that you can have it look life like like life like or like it has life in it, not lifeless, I suppose. While it's in a resting position without using you know wear and tear or energy from the batteries, let's continue. The chest. We have white paint, we have the light up features, we have silver and gold, silver and gold, and then blue gray. The blue gray looks amazing throughout. We have an ab crunch right there. You get down to there, you get back a bit as well. You also have a what I think is a ball peg in the waist, yeah, that allows you to get down to there. So utilizing both, you can get all the way down to there. Utilizing both, you can get all the way back to there. You have a hinge from this plate of the diaphragm or abdomen to the flank. And that will allow you to move him all the way to the side. And it is seamless. Big S, little E, little E, little M, big L, little E, two S's. Continue. Everything works perfectly in that regard, but we're not done. It has a butterfly joint. Butterfly joints on robots tend to work better than humans because you can cover down, but this works better than most robot butterfly joints. So it hinges out. When it hinges out, this piece slides with it and covers down on the gap in the armpit. And then it reveals silver painted tech details underneath, and then you can move it back into position. The actual kind of shoulder, like, or, you know, the the chest piece, the butterfly piece is fully painted for one. And then it also is on its own hinge to give you a little bit of backward movement and a little bit of forward movement. Using both, you can get it all the way around to there and then you can tuck the arm all the way across the chest. There's even white painted stuff underneath. Like this figure is it's right up my alley. I, I feel like I feel like whoever did this listens to everything I say. We have a ball peg shoulder piece, white paint throughout, the red paint, the different off-white piece here. All of it done beautifully. These fins completely painted with the red stripe, sharp as a tack. So this piece is on a ball joint, and this will move around the shoulder. The shoulder itself is on a universal joint. You can get the arm out to there, which is a little limited, except for the fact that this spring-loaded clip here will move out of the way. It is a little tricky because you have to move it and move the arm kind of at the same time. And I'll see if I can do this. And I'm trying to be gentle here. There you go. And then you can get the arm all the way out to 90 degrees with zero problem. Let's move it back and that shoulder piece will cover down immediately. We have the more blue gray and then gunmetal silver on the bicep which does have a swivel. And then we have a double jointed elbow that gets you the full range and the joint is painted. Forearm swivels are incredibly redundant if you have a bicep swivel or a wrist swivel. Usually more so the wrist swivel, with one exception. If you have a decorative piece that you'd like to have in a different position, like this does, that's also spring loaded and painted on the inside, you can move this out. Rotate the forearm and place it back in position if you prefer it out to the side. Then you can move the wrist around and it's all in line. Or if you're like, yeah, I want it on the back. Not a problem either. Move the wrist back. Beautiful. Fully painted whites and golds and silvers, etc. And reds. Speaking of red, the fun and games are not over. So this red piece is a cover down flap. The hands are obviously on ball pegs because you can swipe them out. So the hands get a little bit of rotation, including the swivel. And then this piece is on a ball peg as well. Actually, the, the hand might be a double ball peg, and then this is just used to cover down on it. I can't tell. But either way, in, out, up, down, all the way around, no problemo. Same for the other side. Everything to this point is pretty much perfect with the exception of the eyes. I, I want to drive that home. Perfect. Let's continue. 
We have these. These are where the scabbards plug in. They're also on hinges, so they can articulate. It's a little hard to do with just the fingers, but I'll show you once I have them in, you can move this scabbard around, and this will move accordingly with it. You have the hip skirts. They're on ball pegs. You can get them up and out of the way. To expose a die-cast universal joint, which allows you to get the leg all the way out with tension that is done masterfully. You can get it all the way down. So full Van Dam, full Monty, no issue. You can do the same for the rear. Perfect. Perfectly executed. And because they're on, I guess, double ball pegs, you can cover these down any which way you'd like. No issue. Thigh swivel is built around the universal. It gets you more in than out, so to speak, but it's more than enough out to accomplish what you'll need to accomplish. Legs are completely covered. Look beautiful. Now, this is your moment of zen. Are you ready? Double jointed knee. And when you utilize them, I don't even know if I can tell you everything that's going on here. Like, I don't know if I have the ability to. But let's try. Watch the thigh cover piece. And I'm trying to be careful here. Watch this thigh cover piece here. Okay? Let's start there. Slides down. Keeping the integrity of the knee looking good. Because otherwise, this piece would be up here and all of this would be exposed. Underneath this is more tech details that are fully painted. So the entire thing is completely covered. This piece, as you're manipulating just that, oh, try to, just that first knee joint, tucks in perfectly to the back of the knee. And if you utilize the second joint, these pieces here are tucking in behind the calf for a fully integrated, covered down, anatomically correct knee position. I've never remotely, look at, like just, as I'm moving this piece, just watch this piece. See, like see how it all covers down on itself? I've never seen anything quite like it. As you move this piece here, this piece shifts, covers down as needed. It is remarkable. Remarkable. This, we have gold paint, all that is beautiful. Detailings wise, continues to look good. Silver paint, gold paint. The back of it is fully painted. And let's get to the ankles, because there's more. First of all, we have an ankle rocker, and it's like an old school toy biz rocker. So it's actually on a, a piece here that swivels around the construction of the ankle, which is optimal. And look at that range. The ankle itself is on a ball peg, so you can get the ankle all the way up. This piece will cover down as need be. All the way back, this piece will cover down pretty much as much as you need with no issue whatsoever. So ankle tilt up, ankle tilt down, and then the additional rocker, all of it reinforced by a ball peg for even more movement. And oh, look at this piece here. Let's get this out of the way. As I do the ankle tilt up, just watch this one blue piece shift to cover down. Please say you can see that. It's remarkable. I mean, it's... Oh, it's beautiful. Picture, picture perfect. There is the back of it. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing piece. Let's talk size. And because this is drift, we're using Rodimus or Hot Rod as our points of reference for this guy. So there he is with the MMC Rodimus. So he's too big, it doesn't work. There he is with the Masterpiece Hot Rod. Arguably, once again, too big, but you can kind of convince yourself that this works and I wouldn't be mad at you. And there he is with Masterpiece Rodimus, and maybe Masterpiece Rodimus is too big, but you can kind of once again convince yourself that it works and I wouldn't be mad at you. But here is where the problem lies. I'm going to get what I think are some of the figures that present the best. 
that had the best presentation of transformable masterpiece figures that could possibly go with this guy. Obviously, he's his own line, he's his own collection, but just for the sake of discussion, let's take a look. So in my opinion, these are some of the best presenting figures on the market for a masterpiece shelf. I'm not including Rodimus in that conversation. He's just there to talk about figures it would make sense to have this guy next to for the sense of scale and shelf. But these other four are some of my favorite presenting masterpiece figures in my collection. And they don't stand up one iota to this drift. So I'm not even sure if you should consider putting him with the rest of these guys. I think he will overpower them on a shelf. And that's not to say that he's intended to be put with any of these guys. I just know how Transformer fans are, myself included. You kind of want to group them together. But this guy has a tendency to make your favorite robot look like a piece of shit. Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. It would have been nice to have those lights like Omega where they look good whether they're lit up or not. This guy does have a tendency to look a little lifeless if the batteries aren't being operated. But, I, it's, I mean, that's it's it, that's all I got. I can't say anything else negative about this. I literally cannot. I mean, with all the metal, maybe it would have been nice to have a magnetic Rodimus badge, but, oh God. Outside of that, I got nothing. It is beautiful. The engineering is probably the best I've ever seen on any action figure ever made. It's insane. It works like a champ. The sculpt is brilliant. The paint is brilliant. The articulation is brilliant. The materials feel great. The hardware is perfect. The presence is unparalleled in Transformer figures. The price is expensive. But believe what I say when I tell you, you get what you pay for. This is Easily the best Transformer figure I have ever looked at by leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds. And it may be the best figure I've ever looked at ever. To me, this is the culmination of everything that one should look for in a figure. Everything works exactly the way that you'd want it to. I, I just don't know what else to say. I, especially if you're a Drift fan, like this is a dream come true figure. It's expensive, so it's going to price a lot of people out, myself included more than likely. But I can't complain about the price one bit, not with what you get. Like it almost makes me want to well up. I think I'm going to have to be in on the tarn. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to let that one get by me. Look, if you have any reason, the slightest reason whatsoever to consider buying this figure, don't let this get away. Please. It's amazing. It, I mean, it's arguably perfect and not perfect in like just a manufacturing way, like perfect in a golden child chosen one way. It's spectacular. I'm not sure if it may have ruined me. I'm not sure if I'll be able to ever look at another Transformer figure the same way. I'm not sure I'll ever be able to look at another action figure the same way. It's ridiculous. Bravo, Flame Toys, you anonymous, faceless wonder. I hope one day to meet you and shake your hands, sir or ma'am. Well, well, well done. Let's make some noise for that guy. Whew. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.